Well, welcome to Argentina. This month, Sam and I are exploring Buenos Aires, the Argentinian capital, and this video is going to show you 50 things to do around the city. Buenos Aires is one of our favorite cities in the world, so as soon as we arrived, we hit the ground running. In this guide, we'll be visiting numerous neighborhoods including Recoleta, San Telmo, Boca, and Palermo, while showcasing a mix of fun activities and main attractions. And since we're huge foodies, we'll also be introducing you to a few Argentine dishes you simply cannot miss. For anyone planning a trip to the capital, here are 50 things to do in Buenos Aires. Let's begin with the city's most identifiable landmark. The obelisk is located at the intersection of Avenida 9 de Julio and Avenida Corrientes, and it was built to commemorate the fourth centenary of the founding of the city. The Pink House is home to the President's office. Apparently it was painted pink to diffuse tension between the two opposing political parties. Red for the Federals and white for the Unitarians. La Boca is the most colorful neighborhood in Buenos Aires, and there is one particular stretch of road called Caminito, which is really popular with visitors. Here you can see live tango performances, shop for souvenirs, and have fun photographing the brightly colored houses. We came all the way to Boca to meet Messi, number 10. So for the hardcore football fans, another cool thing you can do in Buenos Aires is visit the Boca Junior Stadium. It's called La Bombonera, and that means the chocolate box. I don't really think it looks like a chocolate box. I mean, it's this giant, a colorful stadium. chocolate box. But yeah, it's right over there. So let's go check it out. If you're into football, you may want to consider doing a stadium tour or even attending a match against Boca Juniors rival, River Plate. This may seem like a rather morbid attraction for a city guide, however, Recoleta Cemetery is one of the most beautiful cemeteries in the world. It contains elaborate mausoleums with statues, crosses, and guarding angels watching over the tombs. It also contains the graves of notable people, but none is more visited than that of Evita Perón. So we're going for a stroll through the Japanese gardens, and it feels like we're back in Asia. The Japanese gardens are located in Palermo and they are cared for by the Japanese Argentine Cultural Foundation. Inside the grounds, you'll find a lake filled with colorful carp and all manner of Japanese vegetation. You do have to pay admission to visit, but it's worth every cent as the gardens are perfectly manicured. We always say we're excited about this meal, but today it's extra special because we're bringing you to our favorite restaurant in all of Buenos Aires. This is a steakhouse, it's a parrilla, and that means they cook all of their meat on the grill. And it's seriously the best meat we've tried in the city. And we've ordered our favorite cut, beef de lomo. It's gonna be amazing. We're waiting for that to show up. Star of the meal has arrived. Star of the meal. Look at this piece of beauty on my fork. Oh. That is some of the most tender meat I've ever had in my entire life. You bite into it and it just disintegrates, it just like melts right into your mouth. And it's so juicy and flavorful, it's just fantastic. Yeah, and this it, is the tenderloin yes. cut in English, so it's, it's the best. Yes. And you know what makes this restaurant awesome? You know how you can tell you're at a really good steakhouse? They don't ask you how you want your steak. They don't say, do you want it rare? Do you want it medium rare? Do you want it well done? No, they just make it the house way and they know what they're doing so you get the best, most optimal steak possible. 
Speaking of food, if you want to try Milanese, another place to visit is El Club de la Milanese. They specialize in this dish and have great sampler portions. Like guacamole, barbecue sauce, mustard. This looks like mozzarella cheese with a tomato and basil. This one is ham and cheese and tomato sauce. This is a cream of cheddar and melted cheddar with bacon over top. Yeah. So, and yeah. we couldn't decide which one to order, so why not get a sampler portion? Yes, so we got seven different ones to sample. All right. This looks good. Let's get all the toppings on there. <coughs> How's that? Oh yeah. So that's veal, cheddar cheese, a little bit of bacon, um, and like thinly sliced spring onions on top. And it's really tender meat, like it's so soft. Wow. one of the most beautiful bookstores in the world. This is called El Ateneo Grand Splendid. This place actually used to be a theater and then it was converted into a movie theater and now it's a bookstore and it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so this section where we're standing now would have been where they had like the rows of seats facing the stage, which is over that way. Um, but when they did the conversion, they had to remove all those seats and they put rows of books instead. Books! Um, and also the stage where they would have had performances has been turned into a cafe. So if you follow me around the corner, I can show you that. If you're around Puerto Madero, another meal to try is the choripan. This dish gets its name by combining two words, chorizo for sausage and pan for bread. There are lots of stands along the edge of the Costanera Sur Ecological Reserve and it's worth waiting in line. We added a little bit of chimichurri to ours and it was absolutely delicious. The San Telmo Sunday Fair is a hippie market slash antique fair that takes place in Plaza Dorego and spills onto Calle Defensa. Here you can pick up souvenirs, listen to live music, sample some of the street food, or browse some antiques for your own collection. So this is something I find really strange. At the market, they're selling people's old family photos, and you can even find like government documents. It's a bit odd. I'm not sure how this ended up <laughs> at a flea market. And I wonder like where these families are, how they feel about their possessions being sold. Family moments. Since Buenos Aires is the birthplace of tango, no visit to the city would be complete without going to a tango show. If you're feeling a bit ambitious, you can even join a tango dancing lesson. Café Tortoni was once the gathering place for the nation's writers and great thinkers. It still retains its old world Parisian inspired feel and it's a nice place to stop for a coffee and something sweet, even if it's just to get a glimpse of the interior. Floralis Generica is a flower sculpture located in Plaza de las Naciones Unidas. What makes this sculpture pretty cool is that it is designed to open its petals in the morning and close them in the evening. Just across the street, you'll also find the National Museum of Fine Arts. 
It holds an international collections of paintings from the Middle Ages up to the 20th century, as well as works by Argentine artists. For a shopping experience in Buenos Aires unlike any other, you should head over to Galerías Pacifico. Located at the intersection of Calle Florida and Avenida Córdoba, this structure boasts hand-painted frescoes, a glass-covered atrium, and plenty of high-end brands. Palermo Woods is a large urban park located in the neighborhood of Palermo. It's popular with joggers and cyclists, and you can even rent a rowboat to take out on the lake. If you're looking for a family-friendly activity or something to do on a rainy day, you can consider visiting the Galileo Galilei Planetarium, which is also in Palermo. So right around the corner from the Evita Museum, you have the Evita Cafe, and we are having afternoon tea here. We just ordered a sampler plate of different types of desserts, and this looks amazing. Like, we've got flan, brownie, tiramisu, and a few surprises that I think we're going to have to bite into to find out what they are. And a little bit of coffee, café con leche. So this is going to be fun. The Vida Museum looks back on the life of Perón's wife and her appeal as a national heroine. The restaurant just behind is perfect for alfresco dining on a weekend. So this video is about ice cream because Buenos Aires has some of the best ice cream we have ever tried and our favorite place to go to is Fredo. We found this place towards the start of our visit. We've been coming like every other day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Um, but yeah, um, so we ended up getting some ice cream this afternoon. And what you see here is a quarter of a kilo. So this is 250 grams of ice cream and you get to choose three flavors. So this one here is forest berries. Look at that. Mm. And that is actually my favorite flavor at Fredo, I order it every time I come here and it's like really thick and creamy and it has a rich vanilla flavor but it also has chunks of real fruit and I couldn't tell you what the forest berries are. I don't know if it's blackberries or blueberries, it could be anything but it's delicious. As for the other flavors, mm, I'm having raspberry. And this is like a raspberry sorbet, so it's a little bit watery instead of being like creamy. So I kind of like it because it's refreshing. Mm -hmm. And on this side, for my third flavor, I chose strawberry. Some might say that's a little boring, but whatever. I like strawberry. That's almost vanilla. Mm. Oh. Yeah but my favorite has got to be this one on the side. Forest berry. Forest berry for the win. Mm. Florida Street is another popular shopping area. This pedestrian only street runs for about a kilometer and it is lined with stores on either side. You can also exchange money here, get a shoe shine or watch some of the buskers get creative with their costumes. So 
One of the experiences that has been recommended time and time again is to go and have lunch at a bodegon. And that's kind of like an old-fashioned tavern. It has a very you know, family-oriented feel. And it's kind of simple, classic. You know, the focus is on good food, large, hearty portions. So that's what we're doing right now. We're eating at a place called Norte, Restaurante Norte. We've just placed our order and the food should be arriving soon. Sam, you're looking happy over there. Why is that? Yes, my bife de lomo champignon has arrived, which is basically steak uh, with mushrooms and a, I think kind of a gravy. And uh, these look like like home, homemade wedges, like home fries, Ooh, with deep fried fries. Of gravy. Just look at, look the at gravy all the gravy, there. swimming in gravy. And it looks like it has. Is that a bit of garlic? No, that's chicken. So I am going to try the meat. I've served myself up a little portion. Yeah. We're gonna make sure I've got lots of gravy lots of and a potato at the same time. Oh man, I'm so excited for this. Wow. Wow, he says, wow. That is some tender meat. And I've never had uh, this kind of steak with gravy before. And it's like, it's like having like Thanksgiving or, or Christmas dinner, except with steak instead of turkey. And the steak is a lot better than any turkey I've ever had. So this is amazing. Puerto Madero is another neighborhood you should check out on your visit to Buenos Aires. The area sits along the waterfront and it has undergone a massive regeneration effort in the last couple of decades. Old warehouses have been turned into lofts, restaurants and art spaces, and it's quite lively if you swing by on a weekend. ARA Presidente Sarmiento is a former training ship turned museum that is docked in Puerto Madero. The ship was named after the 7th president of Argentina and you can go on board and explore the different levels. Another day, another slice of pizza. Today we're at Pizzeria Guerrin, one of the most famous pizzerias in all of Buenos Aires. This is one of Sam's favorite spots in the whole city and we're here for lunch. We've placed our order and we're waiting for the pizza to arrive. So the pizza has arrived and we have to start with the specialty of the house. It's called Pizza Guerrin. So that's this slice over here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. The toppings are falling off. Wow, that's got a lot going on. I see olives. Yeah. What else is there? Well, look, it's a really thick crust, first of all. The tomato sauce is kind of unusual. It's really chunky. And you have mozzarella cheese, slices of ham, red peppers, and an olive. So that's like fully loaded in my eyes. So let's dig right in. Look at me using a, a fork and a knife to cut my pizza. How sophisticated. Oh, it's hot. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. Ooey gooey goodness. Mm. Um, it's a little bit greasy with all the cheese. I've got some really thick cheese they have. So it's really nice. But let me actually get some pepper in there so I can tell you if it's good or not. So next up, this is fugazetta. fugazetta. And fugazetta is normally just onions, but this was fugazetta with ham and cheese. Look at all of the onions on here. Yeah. You can see, you can see the ham right there. Looks mm. awesome. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh. You know what? If you think the first slice of pizza had a lot of cheese, this one has, I would swear, like double or triple. Like it is just overloaded with cheese. And for someone who likes cheese as much as me, that's a very good thing. <laughs> Plaza San Martin is a park located in the neighborhood of Retiro. The plaza gets its name from the giant sculpture of Jose de San Martin, the nation's liberator.
Just off of Plaza San Martin, you can also find the Malvinas War Memorial, which commemorates the Argentine soldiers who fought against the British in the Falkland War. Our favorite time of day. Today we're eating at a place called La Americana and the slogan is La Reina de las Empanadas, the Queen of the Empanadas. So that's exactly what we're going to be trying. We've ordered a sampler plate with five different ones and that should be coming really soon. Yes, and I think we may have ordered one too many because these well, two, are massive. Two or three too many. These are yeah, like gigantic. Like, they are a lot bigger than we were expecting, so I think we'll have some leftovers for, for dinner or maybe a quick snack. Um, but anyway, let's dig right in. I'm going to start with this one right here. This one is called Udanita, and it's a meat empanada that has been deep fried. So let's just let's cut into it first so you can see the filling. There we go, it is steaming. So you can see the beef there, there's a green olive, and also a bit of egg. I'm gonna have to wait for this to cool down. I think it's like fresh out of the deep fryer, to be honest. It's burning my fingers! Blow on your food! Oh. oh my gosh, that's one of the best ones I've had in the country, I kid you not. Like, oh look, the meat is kind of juicy. It's really nice and also the dough, it's made with lard. So you kind of get like a, a salty greasiness coming through. Which probably isn't healthy, but it tastes amazing. <laughs> and which one are you trying next? I'm trying Krioja, which is also a meat one, but Ooh. apparently this one's baked as opposed to fried. So yeah. let's dissect that here. He's Ooh! Look, you can see the juice. Science lab. The juices are coming out. Oh, oh wow! 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 Oh wow! That's you know what? I don't even. I don't even know if I can really. Uh, Oh, that's got a green olive in it as well. Steaming. Look at that. Ooh, baby. Let's try that. So you also had a bite of mine, which was deep fried, so you'll have to compare the two. You know what? There's one common element between the two of them, mm -hmm. and that, that there's so much awesome juicy ingredients inside. Like, these are some of the best empanadas we've had in South America. Yeah, not, like not they're just not dry. Empanadas. No, they're so juicy yeah. and so flavorful. Honestly, the only difference really between the fried and the baked one is just how the how the dough tastes on the outside. The yeah. fried one is a bit more crispier, whereas this one has you know more of that typical baked type mm -hmm. of uh, texture. Teatro Colón is the main opera house in Buenos Aires, and acoustically, it is considered to be one of the top venues in the world. They offer guided tours during the day, however, no video or flash photography is allowed. So today's video is all about breakfast, and the plan is to show you an Argentinian breakfast, or desayuno. Now, we wanted to go to a really nice cafe that's near the Recoleta Cemetery. However, it's pouring rain outside, so we just ran out of our apartment and found the nearest cafe and popped in. So we've placed our order, we are hungry, and yeah, we're gonna be showing you what breakfast looks like in this part of the world. Sam, our breakfast has arrived. Breakfast Can you give has us arrived. A quick intro to I am breakfast in Argentina. A very happy boy. Well, the cool thing about breakfast in Argentina is that they like to keep it simple and sweet, mm -hmm. and that makes it one of my favorite meals here. So I'm pretty happy with what I ordered. I got cafe con leche, which is coffee with milk. The milk is super frothy, by the way. Check that out. I'm not even a coffee drinker. I normally go for tea, but when in Argentina, you gotta do it right, gotta get some coffee. 
And then over here, I have my media luna, which is like a croissant. This one's made with butter. And I have facturas, which are little pastries. So this one is made with crema pastelera, which is kind of like a yellow cream, similar to Boston cream. Um, and this one is stuffed with quince jam. So super excited about that. This is gonna be a good breakfast. And I'm just gonna dig right in. I'm not waiting for you. So I bit most of the jam out, but if you have a look inside, it's like a little croissant roll, a butter roll, stuffed with quince jam, which is so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Sam, can you tell us what you ordered for breakfast this morning? I sure can. So if you take a look down here, mm -hmm. I'm having something called tostadas, which yeah. essentially is toast. Yes. And it's a massive, generous I know, portion. That's a lot of toast. Six slices. Yeah, I, I was thinking maybe like two slices, but I got no. six. <laughs> and what I'm most excited about here is this is like a whipped butter, mm -hmm. and it looks amazing. So I'm just going to pour it, not pour it, spread it all over, yeah. and then take a bit of the jam. I wonder what kind of jam it is. It looks like it may be cherry jam actually. Cherry or a dark raspberry. So getting that ready. Let's see how good this toast is. That is some mighty fine toast. Starting the day with sugar. Palermo is one of the trendier neighborhoods in the city with tree-lined boulevards, a mix of old mansions and luxury condos, plus lots of cafes with outdoor seating. It's worth a visit even if you're staying in a different part of the city. A romantic walk through the tree tunnel, Sam. Will you give me a kiss? The Botanical Gardens are located in Palermo and it's a cool place to visit because the vegetation is arranged by region. You can follow the signs to set foot in Africa, Europe, Oceania, Asia or America, all in one place. For today's lunch we are eating at El Palacio de la Papa Frita, that's the French Fry Palace and actually here they specialize in potatoes, fried potatoes and they have so many different varieties. So what we've done is ordered a basket that's a bit of a sampler showcasing the best of the best. And I think that's coming. So the most famous potato that they have here is called Papa Souffle. And as you can see, it's like blown up like a little bubble. And they're kind of secretive about how these are made. I've heard a few different theories. Some people say it's because they soak the potatoes in cold water and then fry them. Other people have told me that they use really high heat when they're cooking them. And that results in like a little, a little bubble potato. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know the truth. So if you know the truth, leave us a little comment. Um, but actually, I remember trying these potatoes when I first moved to Argentina when I was six years old and I love these. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever, bubble potatoes, so it's nice to be having them again. And yeah, it's just air inside. But you wanna be careful when you bite into it because like there's so much steam that comes out. I don't know if you can see that, but it's still steaming. And what are those mm. called uh, locally? Mm, papa souffle, like a souffle. You know how it rises when you cook it? What's the name of it? The nightlife in Buenos Aires gets going late and continues strong until sunrise. When we visited in our younger years, Sam and I both did pub crawls, but this time around we tried something milder and enjoyed a picada with a cerveza at a bar. Oh, that was probably like 
12 lanes or more. Let's face it, you're going to encounter at least one protest while you visit Buenos Aires. It was our experience that there was some type of demonstration at least every other day. But if there's one thing we really admire about people in this country, it's that they're very politically active and they'll take to the streets to make their voices heard. Another smaller and less crowded alternative to the San Telmo market is the Recoleta Sunday Market. Here you'll find lots of stands selling everything from leather goods to tango paintings and silver jewelry to homemade cakes. You'll likely also come across a couple of musicians performing. So these giant branches you see here belong to the ombu tree and Sam's helping out our new statue friend because these branches are heavy aren't they Sam? Oh, massively heavy, <laughs> massively. And that's the tree off in the distance. Look at how far these branches go, my gosh. And this tree must be hundreds of years old. This is called the ombu. It's massive. While you're in the area, you can also visit Basilica Nuestra Señora del Pilar, which is the second oldest church in the city. Right next door, you also have Centro Cultural Recoleta, which is a cultural center that holds exhibitions, musical performances, movie screenings, and workshops throughout the year. I'm here in Buenos Aires, which means it is tea time, or as we call it here, it is merienda time. So we're at a little place called La Biela. This is a really famous cafe across from the Recoleta Cemetery. We've got a table, we've ordered our food, and a special surprise should be coming. I'm not going to tell you what merienda consists of until it gets here. which is super exciting for us. So have a look over here. Um, this meal that we ordered, it comes with two croissants. So we'll be sharing those. These are called media lunas, and they are sweet, buttery media lunas. I love these. And it also comes with a tostado, the jamón y queso, which is a grilled ham and cheese sandwich. Yeah, those so, are really good. We've been having a lot are, of those in Buenos Aires. Yeah, so super thin, lightly toasted. They're so, kind of your staple snack sandwich in Argentina, aren't yeah. they? So let's start with this, something savory first, and then we'll move on to the desserts. Yeah, that's good. Just a very thin layer of ham and cheese. Super light. Like, I could probably eat 10 of these. I mean, <laughs> so, so thin and light. But yeah, good stuff. And our order came with three different slices of pastries, cakes, pies, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Sweet treats. Yeah, so why don't we explain what there is. So this one here has chocolate and I think like kind of a cracker filling and dulce de leche. You want to hold it up and show us? Yeah, sure. It's, it's a really thick bar. Check that out. Ooh. Fancy. So we'll put that down for a moment. Okay. And then over here we've got, it appears to be like kind of a, a slice apple of apple pie. pie. But 
what's cool about this pie is that it has like a, a, a white glaze. glaze. Yeah, a glaze over nice. top of it. Some extra sugar in there. No complaints about that. And last but not least, we have this. So that is called Pionono. It's a mini Pionono. And it's kind of like a, a little roll with dulce de leche in the middle. Yeah, and anything with dulce de leche is a hit with us. Costanera Sud is an ecological reserve that consists of lowlands that run along the banks of the River Plate. It's a great place for a leisurely walk or a bike ride and you'll also get to see plenty of wildlife along the way, especially birds. MALBA stands for Museo de Arte Latinoamericano en Buenos Aires and it focuses on Latin American art from the 20th century onwards. The museum is located in Palermo. Alright, so for today's meal we're eating at a place called Cumana in Buenos Aires and this restaurant specializes in northern Argentine food so these are dishes that you might find in the region of Salto or Cujuy and the truth is that when we were traveling in northern Argentina we didn't actually eat a lot of northern Argentine food aside from empanadas so it'll be interesting to finally sample those dishes in the capital. So the food came rather quickly, it's already at the table and since it's a bit of a cooler day outside we decided to both order stews. I'm having one that's called locro and it kind of comes in this metal bowl that's really hot and I already made the mistake of touching it so that won't happen again. But here you can see it's like really thick, you can see the chunks of corn in there, we have some spring onions, a little bit of spice. That looks so good, why yeah. don't you stir it around? Yeah, let's mix it all in. Mix that's that's probably how you're supposed to eat it anyway. I, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, so let's mix it all in and look at that. So it has different cuts of meat as well. I believe this one has pork and beef. So it's very, very hearty. And as you can see, it's still steaming. Like this is piping hot. So maybe I'll give it a few minutes to cool down. Blow on it. Time to begin. So look at that, there's even sausage in the stew. I had totally missed that when I was mixing it earlier. So let's get a bit of everything. We've got corn, we've got sausage. Mm. Wow. Pleasantly surprised. Mm. It's very rich and thick. It's like a nice stew type of dish you'd want to have on a winter's day and it's also a little bit spicy I'm not entirely sure what that red sauce was but it's giving the little a little bit of a kick which is nice so yeah I'm I'm happy with my dish first time trying locro and I think it's a success okay so Sam you're having something called carbonada criolla which is also a stew yes and mine appears to be piping hot as well yeah. it kind of has the um the, the texture and appearance of, of, of a chili it looks pretty cool yeah it does look a bit like chili. yeah Let's zoom in. and mine's mine's got carrots and it's got corn it's got beef let's try that a little bit of everything yours seems to have more vegetables than mine mm. That is delicious. Yeah. I'm honestly usually not the biggest fan of stews, but mm -hmm. this is like this is almost as thick as a as a chili. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's really good and it's, it's quite sweet too. Yeah, and it's really the perfect weather to be having this it today. Is. It's and been a little bit rainy these last few days. So. And I, I like that it's got a generous amount of meat, and you mm -hmm. taste the corn and the carrots a lot, and, and there's also potato in there as well too. Ooh. So that's. Yeah, this is the perfect dish for us to be having on a cold day in Buenos Aires. And the icing on the cake is that they brought us homemade bread. So check that out. I'll have a bite of that. And it's like a nice thick slice and it's a heavier bread. Which is really nice. That's going to come in good with the stew. That's good homemade bread. Buenos Aires Metropolitan Cathedral is located in the city center and it is the main Catholic church in the city. It houses the mausoleum of General José de San Martín who helped liberate numerous countries in South America. You'll also find a museum to Argentine-born Pope Francis. Right next to the cathedral you'll also find the Cabildo which dates back to colonial times and today acts as a museum. Ta -da -da -da. 
All right, so as you can probably guess from this, for today's video, we are in our kitchen in Buenos Aires and we are going to be teaching you how to make yerba mate. So one thing we've noticed here in the supermarkets is that they have entire aisles dedicated to mate. There must be like 50 varieties out there at least. Seriously, um, it was like a daunting task. Yeah, just, it's like just how do we it down. choose which one's the right one? Um, but if you've never heard of mate before, it's kind of like a green tea. It's basically a green leaf that they kind of like smash together um, and you use it to make tea, but not in a teacup. We're going to be using these little things, these little mugs. Um, and normally they're made out of gourds. So that's kind of like a, a hollowed out pumpkin or something like that. Um, but these are a bit more modern. I've got my <laughs> matryoshka here. Show them, show them my Monsieur Mustache, my Mr. Mustache. mustache. So this one is Sam's. Yeah, I'm excited to try that. Yeah, so you can get some that are made out of wood. There's metal ones. There's a whole bunch to choose from. But anyways, let's start making this thing. So let's open this. This is our first time making it. Voila. Kind of funny this is our first time making it yet we're teaching you how it's done oh can we be trusted that's how we roll that's the question what, what is it they say that if you want to if you want to learn how to do something teach someone else how to do it there you so go we are so we're going to want to fill it up about two thirds two of the way. thirds of the way that's oh and first you should probably have a look inside the bag look at that so you can yeah. see how the leaves have been oh yeah kind of crushed you get a, you get a really good view from there it's kind of like a loose leaf all right, fill it up two thirds of the way. Two thirds. That would appear to be two thirds. There you go. And they say that you should put your palm over it and kind of shake it to help the oh crap, it's flying shake around it up, everywhere. Baby. <laughs> to help the the smaller leaves or like the powder settle near the top so it doesn't get stuck in your straw but my hand's too little as it's going everywhere <laughs> look at that powder <laughs> anyways so then we're going to take our little straw this is called bombilla and just stick it right in there at an angle and then we're going to grab our water which i boiled earlier you don't want to use boiling hot water so we've had this sitting for a few minutes yes they say the key is uh, 75 degrees. 75 degrees. Well, so that's I, what we're going for. I didn't really check the temperature, guys, but let's just go with that. Oh, yeah. There we go. Fill her up. Fill, Fill her up, her buttercup. Up. There we are. Have a look at that. It's still bubbling. Oh, did we do it wrong? Oh. I guess it's time to try it. So ready for the first sip. I didn't add any sugar to mine because I don't normally have sugar with my tea. Oh, natural. Oh, so, so natural. Let's have a sip of this. Mmm. Yes. Mm. It's been a while since I had this. I never really enjoyed it as a kid when I was living in Argentina. I always thought it was gross and bitter. <laughs> so it's interesting trying it as an adult. How many years have your later? Have your taste buds matured a little mm. bit? Would you say? Yeah, you know, I'm used to drinking green tea now, so I do like this. It is a little bit bitter and it kind of has a grassy flavor. Can you taste those herbs? Yeah, I mean, it tastes green, like grass. Like I'm eating grass in a field, like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's actually nice. I, I am enjoying it. Um, and as you can see, the water level has kind of gone down. So you just grab some more hot water and keep yes. refilling this. And the cool thing about this is you can fill it up upwards to you know 10 to 20 times before yeah. you need to replace the mate. Yeah. So you can just uh and it's a very social drink mm -hmm. like if you see people drinking this on the streets of buenos aires you'll notice they'll be passing around the the same yeah. gourd and the same and the same straw yes you just share so it's a very saliva doesn't matter just pass it along there you go 
When it comes to biking in Buenos Aires, you can either choose a guided tour to take you around specific neighborhoods in the city, or hire a bike to explore on your own. Alternatively, if you're in the city for a longer stay and you don't mind doing a bit of paperwork, you can apply to use EcoBici, a free public bike system with numerous stations across town. Another place worth visiting is the National Congress located on the western end of Avenida de Mayo. This building is home to the legislative branch of government and it's quite impressive when you get up close. Alfajores are kind of like cookies that have been glued together with dulce de leche. We started out by trying alfajores artesanales, which are handcrafted. Some alfajores were glazed, others were coated in almonds, but all of them were delicious. For something a little different, we then hopped over to Havana. While this brand mass produces alfajores, they are known for their quality and unique varieties. We ordered an assortment off their menu including dulce de leche, meringue, chocolate mousse, coffee, quince jam, nuts, and more. Last but not least, don't forget to check out the city's entertainment district. If you're not sure what to watch, just walk along Avenida Corrientes where there are plenty of tango shows, comedy sketches, and stage performances on offer. And that's a huge wrap for our Buenos Aires City Guide. We really enjoyed showing you around one of our favorite cities in the world, and we hope that this video offered a bit of inspiration in terms of things to do, foods to eat, and activities to try on your visit. As always, if you have any suggestions of other fun things to do in Buenos Aires, please feel free to share those in the comments section below. Until next time! So good afternoon from the town of Gachi. Today we took a side trip from Salta. So we left really early in the morning, we were up at 7.30 and we drove through lots of different landscapes actually. Getting to Kachi involves going through jungle, desert, gorges, and there was a fourth one that our guide mentioned that I can't seem to remember at the moment. But either way, it was really scenic, we've just arrived at the town, we had a nice lunch. So yeah, we're gonna go for a little tour I think. don't have a lot of footage today because someone decided to get a little bit sick on Valentine's Day over here. What happened? The altitude wasn't so great today. It hasn't been an issue up until now, but today your heart was racing. Fun. You had a little bit of an accident outside of the I, van. I puked on a mountaintop. <laughs> but anyways, yep. we don't really need to talk about that. Let's just keep showing you the town. You're feeling better now and that's what's important, I'm, I'm right? I'm much better, yes. Much better. Let's enjoy the rest of the tour. How yes, about it? Yes, that sounds good. Filming, always filming. Oh, you sweet. Oh, look at you. You have a few scars on your face. You've been getting into fights, haven't you? Haven't you? Haven't you? Haven't you? Haven't you? So 
Sam. It looks like today we are getting the extra long version of the tour. Yeah, our bus, is, bro our bus is broken down in the middle of the road. Now yes. we're just waiting for basically a rescue bus to take yes. us back. Waiting in the desert. Yep. Surrounded by cacti. We do have some pretty nice views though, so it's not all horrible. ideal terrain for a game of hide and go seek but we can play let's imitate the cacti oh yeah so we made it down the mountain and i think yeah. our mission has turned from sightseeing to just getting back to Salta. <laughs> yeah just let's get back to Salta we still have something like 80 kilometers but I yeah. feel like the hardest part of our journey is now over yes we haven't made any of these touristy stops we were supposed to make <laughs> on the way back we're just it was a survival yeah. journey survival survival today good way to put it yep on Valentine's Day from somewhere in the province of Salta. Today we're doing another day trip. So we left the city behind and we're driving towards a place called Gafadate. Right now we're just making a little pit stop, a little breakfast stop. So we just ate some alfajores, had some coffee. Oh, they were so good. So good. Double layer alfajores. Oh, yeah. There's so much dulce de leche on them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're just going to continue with the drive over and I think we're going to be stopping at a national park to see some cool stuff and they're calling us over because we're leaving, we're leaving. All right, so we have made it to the National Park and our first stop is the amphitheater. Now apparently this place has 70% of the acoustics that you get in Teatro Colón in Buenos Aires. That's not so, too bad, huh? Pretty good acoustics. Are you, are you going to test good. out your vocals here? La, 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 la. Let's leave that to the professionals. It's easy to guess where we are right now. Can you guess where we are? A vineyard! <laughs> yes. So after a really scenic drive, we finally arrived in Cafayate. Mm -hmm. And now we're doing a vineyard tour. Yes. And the best part of this is going to be when we get to sample the wine. Lots of wine. Yeah. So you are having your first glass of Torontes. Yes. And they told me to swirl it around 10 mm -hmm. times before trying it. So I think I am well above 10 at this point. Maybe 10 20. times? That's quite the method. Mm. Nice and fruity and a little bit dry too. church wine that you're drinking right now. This is used in mass. Yeah, I usually don't associate church and wine together, but this one is really sweet. It has a bit of a honey aftertaste. So we have a bit of a shopping stop here at the local market and yes. someone found a gaucho hat. I've always wanted to be a cowboy, not just any cowboy, a gaucho hat. All right, let's see if the hat fits. Kind of does. Uh, a bit of a gringo cowboy, but... <laughs> Okay, so the cow 
cowboy needs his ice cream for dessert. Yes, and this is not just any kind of ice cream. This might look like strawberry and maybe walnut. Oh no, no, this is not that. This over here is wine flavored ice cream, Malbec. Yeah. And this is a local fruit called Cayote. Cayote. So I'm gonna try them both. Is it wow. like a creamy milk ice cream or like no, a gelato? It's, it's more like a gelato, even more, a little bit more watered down than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do taste the wine. It's refreshing. Mm. Now let me try this one. This one, one might be more milky. Yeah, it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> this one is sweeter. Okay. And it has that kind of a. I would describe it as kind of a honey taste. Okay. With a bit of, like, kind of has a bit of a pulpy string. And I think it also has walnuts, right? Yes, it also has walnuts too. So. So do you have a favorite? I like the sweeter one. I like the uh, the coyote one. Mm. But the wine one's also pretty good. It's refreshing. So we are coming to the end of our trip. This is actually on the drive back, and right now we've pulled over at the Three Crosses Lookout Point. So let us show you the view. actually is our final stop. We're now going inside the devil's throat. That should be a frightening experience. Okay, so final thoughts on Gafadate and the Kalchaki Valleys before we get back on the bus. Yes, so this was actually a really relaxing tour, which is fantastic because tonight we are taking a night bus to Cordoba. So we got to see a lot today, but the, the pace was very relaxed. We had mm -hmm. a lot of time to kind of chill. Lots of wine, lots of lots cheese. Lots of wine, lots of good food. So now it's time to have a siesta on the bus. Sounds good to me. bit of a day trip. We've left behind Villa General Belgrano and we're going to visit a little village called La Cumbrecita up in the Sierras and this is where I went to school as a child so it's gonna be really fun walking around and showing you around. <laughs> Well, welcome to my primary school. This is where I went to grade one through grade six, except at the time the building was a lot smaller. We did not have this whole wing. It was just this. Just that. And in the morning it was primary school and in the afternoon it was high school. So it was a very short school day, four hours, and I had recess twice during those four hours. So. Not bad for a kid. <laughs> Top education there, yeah. I think you have a little bit of work to be done. Not too much. Gandalf! popular spot on a hot summer day. Yes, apparently it's called La Oja. Yeah. And everyone seemed to gather here. There's like a little mini waterfall and mm -hmm. little... Yeah, you can go for a swim. Are you gonna jump in, Sam? No, I don't think so. No, no swimming trunks today. That's too bad. So next up we are heading to the waterfalls and we can hear that off in the distance but I want to show you these really cool roofs first because it's like this weird web running straight across here. Follow me! Don't trip! 
Don't fall. Look how cool is that? That's very cool. Very cool. And a little spooky. A minor miscalculation. When you look at the sign, how far do you think the waterfall is? 25 feet? 25 meters? That's what we thought, but once we started walking, we realized, wow, this is, this is like quite far. 25 feet, we're not there. 25 meters, we can't even hear it. It's 25 minutes. Minutes. So now we know better for the next attraction. So Sam, now you have visited both Villa General Belgrano, the bigger town, and La Cumbrecita. Yeah. So what are your impressions so far? Well, I like them both. This particular town I like even more though. It kind of reminds me of the town where I grew up in. It's a bit smaller. And what I really like about this place, it's so cool, is that it's a pedestrian only town. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You drive in your vehicle or in your bus, you get off, and then the rest of it is just walking. You don't have to worry about vehicles or anything like that. You're also higher up in the mountains and you experience nature a little bit more here. So that's what I really love about this place. And it's so peaceful. It is. Can you hear the birds chirping? You can hear the birds chirping off in the pew, distance. Pew. <laughs> chirp, 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 chirp. Germany, or should I say the Germany of South America. Today we're visiting a town called Villa General Belgrano, which has very German roots. Like walking around here, you almost feel like you've been transported back to Bavaria. And this is a town that I'm very familiar with because I actually grew up in a local village that was only 30 minutes away from here. So we're gonna be taking a little tour of the town. I'm excited to show Sam around and maybe we'll try a few German delicacies, some beer, pastries. Who knows? We'll see what's on the menu. So this is kind of a cool sign because it shows all the different festivals that happen here throughout the year. And we have a Christmas fair, an Alpine chocolate festival, a Viennese pastry festival, and also Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest! where they drink beer in their giant pints. Prost! So it's early evening now, about 7, 7.30 p.m. and we're visiting a little craft market in the town. And they have a lot of really strange and unique things here. Like we've seen dinosaurs, so you can buy mate, you can get jewelry, musical instruments. It's just very artsy and seeing lots of fairies as well but you're wondering if they're real or not <laughs> oh yeah that's what I've been pondering all day Hello there little magical elf are you a good elf or a I bad elf in the ecological park yeah and it's just like a turn off of the main strip it's mm -hmm. amazing how within five minutes you're away from the touristy area and you're out experiencing greenery and an escape from the hustle and bustle yeah can you hear the sound of the stream the sound, the sound of, of nature. The so since 
we're in such a German town, that means that we have to have a beer, right? Yeah, apparently you get kicked out of the town if you don't have a beer, oh. right? <laughs> so yes, we're waiting for our drinks. We ordered chop. I'm having a blonde, you're having a red. And I'm thirsty. I'm good. Ready for your ice cold craft beer. Rojo. I think it's really funny that you ordered the red beer and you're a redhead and I ordered the blonde one. We didn't even mean <laughs> to do that, did we? Haha, <laughs> the joke's you know on us. <laughs> this beer's great. This is local craft beer. Mm -hmm. and on a, it's been really hot today, so this yes. is very refreshing. Okay, blondie, time for your beer. Salud. It's quite nice. And look what we've got here. This is called Gablitos. Nice ham and cheese sandwich. Mm. That's real nice. Gandalf. Gandalf is in town. Gandalf! Gandalf's in the house. Argentina is not very cheap right now, but there is one thing that is super affordable and that is That is ice cream. Ice cream, ice cream and wine at the current moment are cheaper than water So we've been eating a lot of that and yes. drinking a lot of wine and I have one of my favorite flavors here I have Dulce de Leche ice cream mm -hmm. called brownie. So it has a brownie as well. Brownie chunks in there. Ooh la la Let's get a good close-up of that. Look oh. at that. Look at that ice cream. You know what? The best thing that happened to me today was that the regular Dulce de Leche ice cream was out mm -hmm. because the one with brownie is like 10 times better. And oh, yeah. I'm having the classic strawberry. You wanna try some? Strawberry? Strawberry? Mm. A couple of days here in Villa General Belgrano. What are your impressions of the place so far? Yeah, it's, it's a fun, quirky town, definitely geared towards tourists. Mm -hmm. it, it, like you said, it, it feels like it's straight out of Bavaria. It's kind of a bit of a fantasy land. It's fun. I love that it's in the woods, it's near nature. You can go for lots of uh, you know scenic walks. Mm -hmm. And I also like that they have really good German food and awesome craft beer. 